Museum and Art Gallery. I've got a couple of assistants with me today. Megan Parry here and Bet San Camera. A bet San Parry, the cameraman, rather. So excuse me if it's a little bit wobbly. She's an amateur cameraman like we all are. But what we're going to be doing today is this is the first in a series of historical walks that we're going to be doing for you. Now, they are all based around the Kavartha Iron Works, so and we're going to be looking at the raw materials that went into the furnaces. Now, the blast furnaces of Kavartha they had three main ingredients. Do you want to tell them what the three yeah. main ingredients are? Go on in. Limestone, coal and iron stone. Perfect. Limestone, coal and iron stone. So each of the three videos we're going to be bringing to you in the coming weeks are going to be based around the different materials that went into the furnace. Just to show you a bit about that process and a bit about iron history. And there's nothing to stop you from learning a bit of history when you're doing your daily exercises. Bet hands jumped in front now, Megan jumped behind. It's going to happen a lot, I'm sure. So yeah, so the raw materials for the ironworks were gathered from the landscape around the furnaces. And these videos are just going to go through how they were gathered and a bit about the history. So today we are looking at limestone. And the idea of the video is, is that you use this to watch and then you do the walk yourself and screenshot the pictures and remember the information so you can take yourselves and your family and friends out on this walk safely following Covid guidelines mind. And we're on the tramway path that is newly laid down, well a couple of years ago now actually, which is next to Kavartha Park. I'll show you a picture, you come out the Kevin exit of Kavartha Park and then you should see it just on the opposite side of the road. So without even more preamble from me, we are going to get underway doing the first of our raw materials, which is limestone. So we'll get cracking. We are starting on our walk and we're starting from the trail coming out to the park, going along this and first and foremost you will see the leet. Before I get too far into everything, one second Megan, a lot of this trail is not accessible for prams and wheelchairs and that type of thing. So do watch the video and make sure you know what parts are accessible to you and what parts are not, alright? But yeah, this body of water trailing next to us here is part of a leak system, a leak waterway system. The channels water right the way into, where does the water go to? Say a bit louder. Kavartha Park's Lake. The one thing I will outline is we're not on the original tram road going up to Kevin Coy. I'll show you a lovely picture now of the tramway going under the bridge of Kevin Coy right the way up to the quarry that we are going to. But we are not on the original tram road yet because this new pathway connects further up. Okay, so once we get on the original tram road, you will certainly see the difference straight away. So we're still walking up the newly laid path for you. So we've got Lakeside Gardens just on our right hand side there and then the river down on our left hand side. And it's not the Taff yet. This is the Vechen River. So the Taff Vechen River. And so it flows and combines with the Taff Vaur and combines the taff. So Merthyr is very much the place that the taff starts really. So this is the point of the new path that it drops off into two different directions. Now down this way connects with the old tramway and that's where the trail gets a bit rough, okay? So if you have got a pram or in a wheelchair or anything like that, any accessibility issues, I wouldn't go down that way, but certainly you can go up this way and then connect to the lakeside garden kind of general paths and roadways and then head back down towards Kavartha Park. So a quick little short loop pretty much but what we are going to do is we're going to be heading down here onto the old tramway which is when I'll talk to you a bit more about the limestone and how all of this worked with Kavartha Ironworks. So we're just walking down the path now down towards the old tramway. So what do you can wear wellies? I would highly recommend wearing wellies which is what I was about to say because it gets very wet down here a lot of this track depending on the weather is pretty waterlogged and perfect puddle weather so as we head in down limestone was quarried from this side mainly this is pretty much the only side if you will the only side of the river tap on the Kavartha Park side that we'll be doing walks because all the other raw materials were gathered from the other side the Aberdeen mountain side and Reedy Car area so the only raw material they got from this side was limestone and limestone was essential in the iron making process because it acted as like a little flux and it took a lot of the impurities out but we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go now so you can see the old stone tramway going down and back up 
Now you can come from that direction if you want, under the old Cavan Bridge. I've taken this way just because it's a little easier with the family in tow and it's a little bit more laid out. The one thing I will say is if you follow this way right the way down, you will come more or less to the ruins of an old lime kiln. Now we won't be going there today just because it's not well kept and again I want to keep these girls entertained and on a nice straightforward path really and they seem to be entertained enough. Let's go! Once you start this walk you will see a recreation of a dram. Some people call them trams, but in Wales we call them drams. And I'll show you a picture on the screen. Hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of them went back up and down this tramway every day. This tramway connected directly to the Cavartha Furnace Bank, and it was essential. And this is how genius and how simplistic the engineering of Cavartha was as well, is that they used the natural landscape. So they specifically got a limestone site that was higher up than the ironworks was. So when they have these full drams of limestone, they didn't have to push them up anyway. They just rolled them downhill. And then when they were coming up, they had empty, empty drams. And obviously if you're going uphill, empty drams is always the one rather than full drams. As you can see, these stone sleepers pretty much go right the way up. Some of them dip off the track now and again, but even when you look at them, you can see where the old railway sleepers and the fittings and fixtures of the rails bringing those drams up would have been, really. Yeah, certainly appropriate footwear for this walk, definitely, because you will get muddy. Yeah, I got, I got, I got Dr. Martin's on. They tough as, don't you worry. Dirty brothers <laughs> Not only this is a great way to find out about how the iron industry worked in Merthyr in terms of the raw materials, but it's also great because a lot of local people don't use this trail and go up into the nature reserve that we'll eventually come out into, and it really is a beautiful place to have a wander around. There are various lime kilns still in ruins around Merthyr, not just along this tram road but in other places, and burning and breaking up the lime was really essential for the iron making process because the lime needed to be processed before it re reached the furnaces. So wherever you see a tramway, really, you will see the remnants of kilns and other infrastructure to burn and process the limestone before it goes into the main blast furnaces of Kavartha. Breaking up the limestone as well was deemed a very unskilled job, and it was often done by children and women. And so along this trail, you would have regularly seen the majority of female workers employed the Kavartha would be limestone breakers, and their daughters basically doing this, breaking up the stones so they were smaller before they went in the kilns and before they went in the blast furnaces, processing all that. And because it was just an unskilled job of breaking it stone. Funny, funny, parts. When you think the mud has stopped, it doesn't, some parts it goes back again. There we go. I never forgot what I was saying, huh? <laughs> but either way, where the, the jobs were deemed to be unskilled and so a lot of the women workforce in Merthyr ended up doing the limestone job and they were called limestone breakers. They would have been a very common sight going along this trail back in the 19th century. Yes, we just come under the, the, the big bridge. And we're still going up next to the river here now. Mud. Mud. So just coming up ahead now, we'll be coming in to the nature reserve essentially and this is where the trail opens up and shows you what was being brought down and shows you the manpower that was needed for the industry. 
sometimes you look at the furnace bank of Kavartha and it's hard to understand the sheer manpower that went into those kind of industries. But when you see quarrying in Merthyr Tidville and the remains of quarrying, you realise just the sheer amount of manpower it would have taken to quarry this stone out and to then ship it down back and forth this trail to be burnt in the furnaces of Kavartha. And yeah. And so I'll show you a picture of how this trail and this area would have looked back in the late 19th century, around the 1870s, and it looked slightly different, and it was certainly much more desolate. Nature, nature has taken back this area massively. And that wall over there, that wall face, is that quarry. And it's been digged back, men by men by men, it's digged that back. And did they have big machines doing the work for the men? It's all manpower, wasn't it? All hand. Hammering. Exactly. And so we'll get a little bit closer to the quarry chang, wall. Chang, bang, bang. Yes, chang, chang, bang, bang. <laughs> That's the view now. What, Meg? This is the view now. All those stones have been dinged back. Yeah. Man, so you look months. at that wall there, and all the quarried wall. We're not exactly sure of how far out the surface would have come into this area because obviously it's all been quarried away and burnt away. But yeah, the limestone was got out of here, the Gurnas quarry as it was known, Daddy. from the late 18th century. And then it was shoved into the furnaces of Kavartha to help the iron industry flourish. So the nature reserve spans out and I'll try to give you a bit of an overhead shot or an overhead map reference of the nature reserve because it's from this point really that you can go in a lot of different directions. So we are just in the open space as you come out from the tramway which we just came from and then you can go over the bridge as Megan's pointing to over that way and that will lead you up to the Taft Trail which is just next to Kevin Coyd and that's the way we are going to go just because that comes out by where we live. You can go right back down the tram road itself and that'll give you essentially half a mile up and half a mile back which is what the trail is really and so that's a mile in total or if you're up for a really big walk you can go into the Tafek and Nature Reserve itself and have a wander and investigate and it links to the Taft Trail and to the roads at various points really and I will try to link a map in the description below for you. And is there anything you found out about limestone? That if you cook it, it turns white. Yeah, because a lot of the limestone as well, it should be said, was quarried and was used to get rid of diseases and things like that. And it was used in farming. So they cooked it and used quick lime and various things like that. They would lime the streets and the roads, which would get rid of various diseases and illnesses and purify areas. From the iron, not iron. Eh. It's from the iron you don't want. Exactly. So it purifies it. So yeah, so we are going to leave our little walk there for now anyway. Hopefully you enjoyed having a little walk with us. It's a nice, quick, easy walk for more stabilities, to be honest. Just make sure you've got good footwear, really. And again, it's finding out a little bit about history, not overdoing it too much. So we are going to do some more videos looking into the coal and the ironstone gathering for Kavartha. But we leave this one there and say goodbye. Hoi vau! Hoi vau! And like and subscribe.